you open your mouth, it ain't going anywhere. So don't encourage head down. Encourage head up. So when the dog comes in, this is when they're little, prior to this hold conditioning. Head them up and start setting yourself up to make it easier. Then when you get to hold conditioning, you might shave a week off of it by doing that. So Millie took it and picked them up real comfortably. Never had an issue, did you? No, so, she, she's always <coughs> now pick things up. And she's, mu she's mouthy. She's a retriever. She likes to mouth stuff. That's good. I like that. Makes makes this part easier. Now, tell us the story about Millie, because you just started with Millie on hold uh, just last weekend. Sunday he sent night. me a video of it. I have the video of it. The first one. Picks right up on it. All over the place. It's in her mouth. It is not coming out. She won't drop it. And he sent me a message. He goes, I think this is going to be kind of easy. She really has a nice hold, and she did. Right? Right. And relative to Hutch, who was a chomper, she's holding it, and it's not a lot of coaxing to get her to hang on to it. Yep. She's a little, un she's uneasy, and not uneasy, just not steady. She's all over the Kind of back and forth. Moving around, down, moving wiggling, around. adjusting. She's, yep. a, she's a side hip sitter. She's always one of the E's. <laughs> she's one of the E's. Yes, <laughs> she's doing it all the time. Watch, we'll just watch her when we put her up here. She's always like that. She's just fidgety. So she, she was fidgety, but she had this thing in her mouth, and she had it. There's a side set. I don't know those dogs. So she held on to it, but she was all over the place. So Wyatt said, I think this is going to go pretty good, and I, I'm watching it from a text message. So I go, yeah, that could go very well. But likely, too. The dogs got excellent breeding. Probably been wired to hold pretty easily. So, yeah, I, I agree with them. So you did it for how many days this week? Uh, I think I missed one day. Missed one day, so he's... Five for six. Yeah. Then he comes here, and yesterday he says to me, we're done after a long day of workshop, and what does wife want to do? Put in a little more work. That's all right. He's an overachiever. So he says to me, "Let's do. can you do hold conditioning with me? I'd like you to see it. Now you're doing Hutch at the same time. Right. And Hutch is into his second hold conditioning. He didn't finish it completely last time. I think basketball season took over coaching and yep. ran out of time. So he started it. He didn't finish it. I think you got about 60% through. I would say. Based on what I saw. So he got done with it, and then he started it back up now. So you're probably going to take a lot more time, big picture, weeks wise. Who is that? Is it this one? Okay. So you're going you're gonna to take a little bit longer because you started, stopped. I'd say you're going to start now 20% of the way into it. You're going to go through it a little bit quicker this time because you've already got a little bit of a foundation started. But it's going to take you longer because you broke it apart. That's fine. Who cares? What's the race? Right? We've talked about that all week. So, now, Millie comes here last night. We do Millie first last night. We put Millie up on the table and I said, I'd like to see what you have. And he showed me. And what, what did we see? Millie, all over the place. Up, back, and forth. Now, when we start this out, I tether them. And he does too. He tethers them in the garage. I tether them on that freezer on the left. And there's a couple nails that are in that stairwell. One's higher than the other. Because if a dog's taller, I put them on the low one. If the dog's short, I put them on the... No. If the dog's short, I put it on the low one. If the dog's tall, I put it on the high one. It's a, this is where I like the steady tab. Because I put them on a flat collar. I got them. I put them on a flat collar, not a slip. Flat collar with this little ring, and it hangs right here, and the dog sits, and the dog can't duck out. Because the dog's going to want to duck out. So I don't let the dog duck out. But not tight. Not but. tight, but tight enough. If he moves, he's not going anywhere. Can't go left or right. Can't duck down. Because he'll try to avoid me. But this isn't going to be that great to start out with. So I do that over there, and I get it started, and... He had done that, and then he goes, I think she's holding it pretty well. And he, had it, we, he said, should we tether her out? I said, no, I don't, you tell me. He said, no, I think we can do it without. So we put her up, we put her on here, and she's really moving a lot. So, okay, we did that. She held real well, but I couldn't take, I said, let me try. So he gets the bumper out, gives her a command. To, we're using dead, right? And takes it out, but kind of pulls it out. I try it. And hold, 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 and she's all over the place. And then I wanted to take it out, and I, it's a vice grip on this thing. She's not chomping it, but she's not releasing it. She's not, she doesn't hold it super, I mean, she's not tight when she just has it. But as right. As soon as I take, it, take it, it out of her mouth, it clamps. Now she's tightening down. You're not getting it out of my mouth. Yeah. It wasn't that she was growly. She wasn't aggressive. She wasn't fighting it. Just, she just tightened. I want it. And I went, how am I going 
can edit this out of here. So I take her gums and I pinch it to her tooth and she opens her mouth and I spite it out. Wow, that's not a very nice delivery. So we need to fix this. So we do it again and she does the exact same thing. And I said, let me take this dog off the table. We put them on the table because it takes away their confidence. Makes them focus on me a little bit more. So I put her on the ground because I knew she's not spitting it. The other thing is, is when they're right here, if she spits it, I can catch it most of the time. Down here, she spits it, I ah, missed it. As soon as I miss it, we lost it. So up here, real easy for me to be right here operating. Let's put her up here. So we did this up here, and she is not spitting it. I have zero doubt in my mind that she will spit this out. So I said, let's put her on the ground. So I put her on the ground, and she held, and I just called her to me, because that's my next step. Which is one of my next steps. I'm going to call her to me and have her hold on to it. Good. And I'm praising her up, and she's not spitting it. And I go, man, you're going to go through this really quickly. But then I went to take the bumper out again, and I had to wrestle it out. I went, something's not right here. Something is not right. So we get her back. What do we do? We put her back on the tailgate at that point? Because I did that two or three times. And she has never dropped the bumper, has she? Uh, I think she, I think in that first week, one time she almost dropped it when she dropped it there. It so was the second time. So the next, the second time. So first thing I'm gonna do is let's put right. her on the flat. Yep. So we, we get her. The idea is just to make sure that they're comfy and steady. You know. So I get her up on this table and I went back to put it into hold with her, and she immediately went to grab it from me, and I said, "Not a chance. You're not telling me when we're gonna hold condition." You're not telling me when you're going to spit the bumper out. I'm the boss. And she went, what? You're not giving it to me? And I corrected her. No. Boom. She went to grab it. No. And she looked at me. and So I went to put it in her mouth, expecting her to nip it. And she she didn't. I, expect, she, I expected her to go ahead. And, I still love you. I expected her to grab at it again, and she would not grab at it. And she went... And then I went, put it in her mouth, and she went, uh-uh. She fought it. And she spit it out one time. I've got it in, and she spit it out. And I went, well, he goes, she never did that. That's the only second time she's ever done that. So I said, well, we've started over. What happened was is he started, but he started on her terms. In her terms on how we're going to do hold conditioning, Wyatt. And I don't really mind hold conditioning because I like holding stuff in my mouth. But I'm going to hold it as long as I want and I'm going to take it when I want. And this is my show. You're just going to be my puppet master. No, nope, it won't work. So we reversed it 180 degrees yesterday to the point where she said, I'm not sure if I want that thing even in my mouth. And then I had to wrestle her. And it was a wrestling match to get it in. And, it, and I'm going to do it now, and I don't know how she'll take it, because we did it a couple times. But the thing that changed was as soon as I wrestled her and I beat her, and she held on to it. And you I won. Said, you won. won. You didn't beat her. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Won. Yeah, I, I won. Just and for I clarification. Beat I beat her like. Mentally. I'm super competitive. I beat the hell out of her. No. So, hold, hold, that go on the DVD. hold, 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 hold. And I could see her mouth. She wanted to go like this. Oh, hold. Hold, hold, and all of a sudden I reached out and I said, dead. And her little mouth went, without anything. She just, okay. And I put it back in. And we did three in a row. And we had, I thought they were very nice. But here's the difference. When I put it in her mouth, here's what she did. There was none of this. There was none of this avoid me. There was none of this wiggle my feet. It was. And these little eyes looked right at me. And I went, hold, hold, dead. It was beautiful. So it changed really quick in a matter of five minutes. But it was starting over. So we are starting over. I really would tether her if I was starting over. We don't have that tether. But so let's try it. I don't know what she's going to do. I really don't. Because yesterday I didn't know what she was going to do either. Go ahead. Hold. 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 
There's the change I wanted. Hold. Hold. Dead. Dead. Very good. Very good. Now, what I like is that little tail is going. Dip, 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 dip. There's nothing. Yesterday, that tail didn't wag the first couple times because it was one of these. When we when we got that big change. It was one of these. I literally was wrestling it in, wrestling it into her. Can you do one where you go from the side of the tailgate? So yeah. I literally wrestled this in. I'll spin around, Shane. I'll do it that way too. Sit, sit. Now, first things first. Before we get into this. I want just a dog that will sit for me first without it in her mouth. This is where tethering it would help. Can't move anywhere. Now, when we first started that first repetition, she still had the tendency to look away. She reverted right back to her old ways. And so what I do, I didn't focus, I made sure that I cupped the jaw to make sure it's not coming out, but I helped steer her to make sure that this didn't happen. I, I, I. But what was really interesting was the body language changed so greatly from her when Wyatt brought her and did her his first one. She was just so. And what? How do you describe her? Excitable, she, right? She. I. I think I told you she likes when we would open the tailgate in the garage, and I, you know, she knew about that. She. Her tail was going. She was excited. She's fidgety though. Yeah, a little fidgety. She's fidgety in general. A little bit. Yeah. She's. She's. She's a lot like Fee. Fee, that little puppy of Rye's sister, is fidgety. They want to go. They're really into stuff. But I don't. I think we can stop that. I think you can stop that because I think at times Chris needs to let her know that it's just not acceptable. This dog needs to know sometimes that's just not acceptable. <laughs> Sit. And one thing Sit. you notice we. I cleared everything out of the back so that there isn't a bunch of distractions. So here's how I'm going to do this. She's not taking it anymore. I'm putting it in. That's a huge difference. We're do she's doing it on my terms, not on her terms. So I roll her gums up because I don't want her gums pinching on this. Now yesterday, I didn't, give a, I didn't care about the gums. It was just get it in there and hold it until she started to stop fighting. And as soon as she stopped fighting, I slowly released my pressure. And as I released my pressure, I ripped in there and I peeled the little gums back and I went, as long as it's not spitting out, I'll get those gums out of the way. Because it wasn't hurting her. Sit. Hold. So nice and gentle. Hold. Which is not what it was yesterday. Yesterday it was hold. 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 Here you go. Hold. 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 It's so loose in her mouth right now, I hear it rattle. Hold. She's not chomping. Hold. I won't allow the turn. Hold. So I'm bracing with this hand and this hand. Hold. Hold. Dead. Thank you. She thought twice. She went, started, then she decided I might not want to, and then I really went, because I was about to say something, and she went, okay. And I think and I'm riding a roller coaster with her. And I didn't say a word. She felt it. I, watch me. <laughs> watch me, because I went, and she went, whoa, whoa, whoa. She knew what was coming. Dogs read us better than I can read them. And I think I can read them pretty good. She reads me a lot. Thank you. Hold. 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 Hold.
almost got too long. Mm -hmm. There was a near point where there where she was going to go, this is getting a little bit longer than I'm used to and I'm not sure. I got a little outside of her comfort zone. I got out of it, sensed it, got out of it. And I think we're quite stiff. Mm -hmm. Let me spin it this way. Now, I still call it fidgety, but this fidgety is a tenth of what the fidgety was yesterday. Ah. That's much less fidgety than she was yesterday. Yesterday it was like she was a worm squirming all over the place. Ah. You can still see she's such a thinker. You read her body language, read her eyes, read it. She's a thinker. She's thinking about, a, a, she reminds me of me a little bit. I'm thinking about so many things at once. I'm a scatterbrain. Well, so is she. But when we can get focus out of her, boy, it's amazing what we can get. Oh, she's not, I don't mind her if she doesn't take it. Hold. Oh, not help her. Hold. Oh, my turn. Hold. Oh. Hold. 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 She's bracing on this hand way too hard. Hold. 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 Big steps. Good. That's enough. Mm -hmm. So let's bring hush up. Hush up is different. <laughs> that was good. That was real nice. Towards the end there, what I was trying to do is I was trying to position her without even touching her. I was trying to get. Now that normally doesn't isn't two days worth of work. That, and I don't think it is two days worth of work. He's got a week into her already of prepping. It was prepping for something. Wasn't quite exactly what we wanted. But it gave her a real nice shape, and now I'm just starting to sharpen. Your body all position was a little different at the very end than it was. More relaxed? Yeah, well, the first one, I think she was laying way over on her hip, and her leg was almost stretched out. And then before you put it in her mouth, on the last one, she was sitting real nice. I think that she got a little uncomfortable, and then kind of sure. moved over to a hip, but it looked, it looked a lot nicer. Yeah, she's, like I said, she's fidgety. She's a fidgety dog. But I would take that most days. I don't think it was quite calm enough. I don't think it was quite undistracted enough. It was still, you could still see it. But I think from when, even when we started to when we finished, I think it slowed down. I think it, it started to fade that antsiness, fidgetiness. So now here comes Clutch. Now Hutch is a chomp chomp. Look, look at this dowel. This is a new one. This is this is the he's got a good move. It's the chomp. So now with Hutch, Hutch again has been through hold conditioning. I'm gonna say 60% one time quite a while ago. Then he started back. So I think he's going to go through it quicker than he did would have. If he had gone start to finish, I think he'd go through it quicker this time than the first time, just because he's got a little bit of a head start. But this is something that if you don't see it through all the way, it's it's not going to work. So why did you stop the first time? Uh, why? I didn't make enough time for it. Uh, life got real hectic. He's a basketball coach. Basketball coach. Basketball season started, right? Yeah. And. A lot of stuff gets put aside, right? Yeah, and it was just one of the things that didn't make it. Um, yeah, yeah. And so now, watch him. Now, here's a different style. Now, yesterday when we did with him, what, what did we have? We had he was, he was real choppy yesterday. He was, he, he'll actually roll his head back, and he I don't think he minds this at all. Now, did he mind it when you first started? Uh, a little bit. He's... 
Now, this antsiness, he's ready to go. Like, he doesn't mind this. This is why I say, why are we forcing dogs to do this? You know what force fetching does? Pinches ears until it hurts so much they squeal. And then when they hold it, you turn the pressure off. That's part of it. You wrap a rope around their toe and you pinch it so tight that it hurts. And then you turn it off when they hold it. Hello. What, what? For what reason? Because that's how we always do it. That's not a good reason. So I've yet to have anybody give me a better reason for doing it than that's how we always do it. I don't, I don't think that's a very good reason. So I like getting results because I think another thing, I've talked a lot about connecting with the dogs and developing trust and feel and all that stuff. This is another chance to do it. This is really hands-on. This is maybe more hands-on than most of the stuff we do with the dog. Not very often that I raise them up to my level and look in my eye to eye. That's telling him something. It's definite body language stuff. So I'm saying, hey, we're going to do this together. And if we get through this together, we're way... I think that's part of why retrieving and all that more advanced stuff accelerates. It's because you eliminate running off, you eliminate dropping bumpers, you eliminate switching. Once you get done with the dog with this and you start doing doubles, they don't switch. Because they can't drop the first one until you tell them dead. So why go pick this? Why go over to the second one? I can't pick it up. I got one in my mouth already. I think a lot of people think it's cute when you got two, three bumpers out on a pond and they go swimming. They pick one and then another and another, and they're fumbling around with three different birds and they're juggling them around and bringing them back. And I think a lot of people think it's cool. I can't stand it. It tells me that that dog is retrieving on its own terms. I send a dog for a retrieve. The retrieve comes back to me. Not to the next one, and then maybe it's dropped, and maybe it gets picked back up, and maybe switched three, four times. You know, that's a dog doing his own thing. So this eliminates that. They're wired. They got it in their mouth. They can't spit it out until they bring it back to me. So, sit. You're up. Hold. 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 Right away. Watching birds. Hold. Hold. Oh. Oh. Now, this is what he does, right? Oh. And he'll start, he eventually settle in. So, uh, and, and, and what, by that I mean, oh. last time I did it, he started more like this. Oh. And he got to a point where I could set it in there and he didn't chomp like oh. this. But now that we're starting over, we're not here starting over, we're back to here starting oh. over. And now we got to get through this little part again. Oh. Oh. I'm pulling down quite hard right now. Hold. 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 As soon as he stops pulling up, pushing up, I stop holding him down. Hold. 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 Sigh. Hold. Okay. I guess I'll let you do it. He got a nice drop. He drops well. But I was pulling really hard. I mean, I was physically holding him down. He really wanted to do one of these. And as soon as he stops doing one of these, I stop pushing on him. Fair is fair. You stop pushing on me, I'll stop pushing on you. The goal is to just get you to hold on to this hutch. He's got to figure out that he's going to have to do it on our ter on my terms. So let's do it again. Sit. So I don't have an issue with him chomping it. Hold. Hold. He's very tense right now. Hold. 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 Someone said, I can put a bumper in there. He wants to throw his head back. You still want to go through the dowel to recognize how much more enjoyable the bumper is? Because this, yeah. And you want to study them all the way through this, and, right? Hold. No. Now he's really bracing. Hold. This is where tethering would help. Hold. No.
this is where it's hard with him because his eyes, he just never wants to look at anybody. Whether you're holding or not, he doesn't want to look at you. He's not a real social dog. He's very independent. So he likes to work on his own. So in order for me to get what I really want to get out of him, I got to get him to work with me. Come on, come on. I want to get one more good one out of him. Hold. Then we'll grab Ellie. Hold. 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 No. My tone, I think, is important throughout this because when he was doing something I just didn't want, physically is one thing, but me just, at one point, I, what did I, hold. I think he thought I was saying no in a growly voice because his whole body went. He really submitted when I did it. I could feel him kind of collapse. I'm not trying to break. I'm never going to break this dog's spirit. <laughs> this is one of those dogs that you can whack him in the head with a two by four and his tail won't miss a beat. Like he's just, he's really bold and strong. And just, he's just got a good spirit. Maybe a little too much at times. So let's see Ellie. Uh, now Ellie, who's, about, who's bag is this? Why is it? Here, here, here. Sit. Now Ellie has been hold conditioned. So when we get to this next step, we do this on the table. That's good. That establishes some, it's like groundwork for a horse, I think. It's just foundation. Then we move it to the ground with the wooden dowel. So you do it first on a table or elevated. Then you do it on the ground. Now, notice how she takes and holds. It's quite delicate. Very pretty. Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> Holding high, because I encourage high hold. I encourage hold, hold. Very good. Now, when you get your dog to be able to hold, and you can move around a little bit with confidence, and she's not going to drop it, I'll put her back. I'll put her down on the table, and I'll do the same thing. But then I'll take a step back, and I'll say good, and I'll come back. Dead. Very good. Reset her. Hold. Hold. Then I can take a step back and I can say, Ellie girl. Hold. Right here. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Hold. Hold. There. There's a retrieve. Took two steps, but that was a retrieve to hand. So instead of going from hold on the table to saying, let's put her out and make a retrieve and have her retrieve it from 15 yards, oh my gosh, you're gonna, we might go right back to the problem where we're running around. Instead, we're going to baby step it, hold, one step, Kelly here, hold, see, there's a victory lap, it's just a mini version. So I can fix this right now, hold, dead, thank you, from here. It'll be all toned. Hold. Hold. Now when she comes to me, instead of the hold, <coughs> swing around, I'm going to hold. Ellie, here. 
Hold. Thank you. Hold. Reinforce. Dead. Good. There's a retrieve without a victory lap. So if I do that every single time, I'll eliminate her victory lap. Her victory lap is a much smaller version of some here. <laughs> some have victory laps the size of this property. <laughs> but that's we need to shrink it down. So we go from a dowel. Now we can go hold, 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 hold. I don't want her dropping. So when she's up on the table, I test her. Because a lot of times you'll go to reach to touch it, and the dog will spit it out. So I'll come up and hold, 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 hold. I'm going, I'm doing the same motions of me taking it out, but I'm reminding her hold. Because she'll start triggering to spit out based on my action. And I don't want that because I might go, I might reach down for something. Oh, wait, I got to look at something else. And I don't want to cripple in and spit out. Because she holds till I say dead. Hold. Broke test her. Hold. You hold till I say, no. Because you said dead. <laughs> it was perfect timing. Hold. So there's a, that, that simple little me not thinking clear through that mm -hmm. set myself up to have a little bit of an issue, mm -hmm. right? Oh, you see her? No, you didn't say it that time. <laughs> Dead. Good. Oh. Now, we go from that little bit of recall, hold, heal. <laughs> If I really want to change this, I got to do what I sold, told the Garlocks about play stream. It's zero tolerance. No more victory laps. Dog comes in, she's going to deliver. And I'd start it out by making them real short and simple and building on to them. Because if she comes in hot from 100 yards, full bore, which is how I want her, for me to slow her up and have her deliver nicely there is a lot harder than it is 5 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. The habit's formed how many times before we get to 100 feet, 100 yards. Oh. Hold, hold, good. Hold, dead. Thank you. So now we can do heel work. I can heal the dog into water and out of water. Holding. Holding gets to be a, a big issue when you go come out of water. So what's the dog do first thing comes out of water? Shakes. Spit it out every time. So to start out with hold, I'm in the water myself. When I'm starting to get this hold out of the water, I stand in the water real shallow, make the dog make, have the retrieve, have them swim back to me, have them on their feet, and have them stand in the water. Hold, 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 dead. Now they shake. So it's kind of a nice trick. I don't like dogs that circle around and come to heel before they drop. It's stylish, it looks good, it looks very good. Your dog does it. Looks great, it's ESPN stuff, it's really cool. <laughs> the problem is, is when they come out of the water and they swing around into heel position and they dead, they shake. Who's next to them? So I get them to come up in front. Dead. Shake. So I'll get next to my buddy. <laughs> shake. And I get them. So that's just, it doesn't matter. But I prefer them delivering to the front. Because then I don't get wet when they come out of the water. So we want to do, we want to be careful with water. Because water can evolve, erode hold conditioning pretty quickly. Because they come out and it's very instinctive for them to spit it out and shake. So we got to we got to build that into part of the process of hold conditioning. And then we go to bumpers. Yep. I don't think she'll jump up here. I don't let them jump up on tailgates until they're about, she's old enough now, but at least a year. Come on. Come on. Here. Come here. Do the same process with a bumper. Hold. Hold. 
oval. Now, notice when we did Ellie, now what we're doing, or uh, Millie, now we're to Ellie. The steadiness factor is important. This took a long time. Watch the videos. I, I, I hold conditioned this dog live on Facebook for the first 10 sessions, maybe. And she was, she wouldn't even move. She locked up. She was a statue. She froze on the table whenever I put something in her mouth. She couldn't wag her tail. She couldn't do anything. Her sister, genetically the exact same dog, couldn't get her feet to sit still. She was so excited and happy and wiggly, and she was a lot like Millie. Yeah, that's that. that. I went back and watched that one. Yeah. Those two are really so cool. I had this, the same dogs. I hold conditioned them live on Facebook for the same, like, two weeks. And I showed it one after another, and they were, like, black and white. They were black and yellow. They were black and yellow dogs. But they were totally on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So her, now I've got her pretty confident with hold, and it reads in her body. But for a while, her body wouldn't do this. Her body would shut down, and she would just go, I don't want to move. Well, i got to get a dog to move, because they're going to have to retrieve and hold. i got to get them to move around a little bit. So I'd get them up on the table, I'd get them comfortable holding, and then I'd bring them over here. Come on. Good. Come on. Come on over here. Come on. Very good. Very good. Move their feet. Hold. Oh. You got to remind them to hold. Hold. Oh. Hold. Oh. Hold. Oh. Very nice. Hold. Oh. So we do this to get them going. Dead. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Right here. Hold. Oh. Yeah, once I once I get past the table, I don't hardly use the table anymore. And I just get once I'm really, really comfortable, then I'm working off the ground. But it takes I don't know. I don't want to say times, because I think people always ask, well how many how long should I do this? I don't know. So when you switch to the bumper, yeah. you've done all the progression with the dowel. Mm -hmm. Or will most go, of it, yeah. Will, yeah, when you go back, you put it back I put it back up on the table and I put a dowel in her mouth. Or up. All right. Yep. And then once you're comfortable, you get her moving up. Now you're back to the ground. Yeah, with but I move her with the bumper, and I move her with the dowel in the mouth too. Right. Grab me one of those. Uh, Meg, will you grab me one of the big bumpers? Yeah. Over there. Or I should have one. I don't know if I don't have one. You want to just grab me one? Yeah. Or does someone have one? So I want to show you big bumper too. Little bumper, skinny bumper, big bumper. I got one. Hold. Ooh, that's a big one. Hold. Hold. So this one is more challenging. Hold. A lot harder. So if your dog's going to pick up big birds, if your dog's going to pick up big sheds, got to work with big ones too. Hold. Got to work with very little ones. Who's got a puppy bumper? Is there a puppy bumper? I got one. Yeah, puppy bumper. Hold. Now, I really want to go get that one, but I'm holding because I've been wired to understand I can't drop this thing until he says the D word. I won't say it because. Remember when we did the distraction yesterday when Todd and I were doing that circle memory? That last retrieve or the retrieve that Taylor made, the trailing memory, on her way back, I pitched a bumper up and to the side of her. Can't switch. Can't switch at that point. That's because she's been hold conditioned. Taylor had a bumper in her mouth. Taylor understood. I got to get it back to dad before I can do anything. And then I turned it into a nice delayed memory because I ended up sending her on it later anyway, but from a different position at a great, much greater distance. And you but, didn't throw that distraction when you first moved her to the floor. No. This comes, this comes after we're healing. We're doing all sorts of stuff. So, but... This is, if my dog is hold conditioned, I can do this. I can start doing this. Now, before she's hold conditioned, go back to our steadiness breakout sessions. Put the dog on remote sits, right? We had a point where we put the dogs on remote sits and we moved around without them. Keep them coming, Tammy. Got 
tennis player? Yeah, tennis ball. Super tempting. Tennis ball. Steady. I can do the same thing with the bumper in her mouth later when she's hold conditioned. So it tests the steadiness, and we got to focus on holding, having something in my mouth. So this excitement, bumpers, all that stuff, we've all seen this dog. She loves to retrieve, right? It's not that she doesn't like retrieving. It's she's been taught the discipline to go beyond the idea of retrieves don't overrule everything else. The foundation comes first. The hold conditioning, I could have had the bumper in her mouth the whole time and done that. No different. So, But before I can do it with a bumper in her mouth, I've got to be able to do it without a bumper in her mouth. So that's that incremental parts of it. So by the time we get done with hold conditioning, we've got dogs carrying stuff around in their mouth. We've got them doing, they're not really retrieving, but they might be recalling to me. I can do reverse heels. We talked about reverse heels this morning. I can do a reverse heel. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Heel. Take a bump. You're a great, you're a great partner, Jimmy. Hold. Heel. Heel. Come on, 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 come on. Good. Hold. Heel. This time I want to get that nice delivery. Here, 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 here. Hold. Good. <laughs> So I can take a lot of the other stuff that we're talking about doing drills-wise and just incorporate bumper in the mouth. And as long as I've got that going, these dogs are going to be... If I, do, if I take my time and get through this three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, I don't care how long it takes. Do it an extra week rather than stopping a week early because otherwise you're in, in Wyatt's position. You've got to go back and start over. Now, he'll go through it quicker the second time. But the big picture, he's going to have more time into it than he would have if he were able to stick it through. So plan it, this out. You probably have other things that you can work on while you're doing hold conditions. So even yeah. though you're not doing the retreats. Just because you're not retreating doesn't mean you're done. You're doing recalls, you're doing steadiness. Sit to the whistles. All, right. All of that stuff can happen during this. If your dog's a little bit older, you can do denials. I wouldn't do it with a super, super young dog that's just getting back into retrieving. And I wouldn't do it during, like, I don't want to do this during teething. I don't want to do denials during teething. Because the dog is not going to be able to make a retrieve. So I, I, when I'm I want to do this towards the end and after I get completed with old conditioning. Because the steadiness stuff, eventually I want to reward it. And I'll reward it with the retrieve. If that dog's steady, 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 like she has been, how many have I thrown now? How many? How many do you think? At least six, right? I had four bumpers, and I did it at least almost two, almost twice now. Ellie here. She's got to leave it alone. But then she gets a reward for it. Oh, oh. Zero tolerance. Set yourself up for success. <laughs> or failure. Heal. Who's got questions? Hold. Good. Did. It's a really, really important part of the big picture retriever stuff. So uh, you said, um, like I said, why it said to me wasn't your retriever. No retrieving, because if you do, it's not, you're not getting there. You're not going to get a nice delivery. Okay. You're going to have the same damn problem you had before. Okay, okay what's your final spitting, dropping, switching? Okay. I'm trying to victory laps. I'm trying to think back to when you were kind of finishing up. I remember you were doing your lives, and you were maybe you weren't finishing up, but you were doing some. Was it just the reverse heel stuff with the bumper when you were in the kitchen in the entryway there on there? Probably heel work. You ever so. At some point, though, you got to pitch one and yep. have them hold it to you. Where yeah. you would start that inside, really, really controlled, or um, a garage, or if, if you're doing hold conditioning, you're not just getting started with retrieving. So you probably are right. retrieving strong enough that you could do it outside. But like my my porch would be a good place to right. do it. And now you're that's your gradual in, back getting back step. into your yeah. retrieve. So I don't know that you have to do it in a hallway. Sure. 
because that's really elementary. Be the, hall, the reason we do hallway is to eliminate dogs from escaping when they're little puppies. That's not for not so much for hold conditioning. It's just right. to get a dog to make a channeled retrieve back. But when we get to the point where we're hold conditioning, you don't hold condition if your dog doesn't retrieve. Retrieve first. Right. So if you if you aren't retrieving and you're to the point that your dog's done teething. You need to retrieve before you can hold. The transition back into doing retrieves isn't that, okay, my dog can reverse heel with a bumper in her mouth. Let's go outside and start, no. start throwing no, out. But, I, but reverse heel is nice. Yep. And then recall off of sit is nice with it in their mouth. Yep. And then, so a good way to realistically do this would be, so my dog holds, real, does all this stuff movement-wise, brings it back to me, or I, re, or I reverse heel and get it to me. And then I come here and I go, Ellie, come here. And so, I just did a reverse heel, no. two minutes ago was it? No. Hold, 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 hey, you're coming up to me, hold, dead. We did it in the exact same spot, the exact same distance, it was virtually the same thing. Much like when we do our marks, we pitch a bumper 20 to 30 yards in a straight line, and the dog runs out and picks it up and brings it back to me. And then I transition to a trailing memory in the exact same spot in the next drill. And I do the exact same thing, but it's in the same spot, but it's a different because I didn't throw it. Well, this one's reversing that. I went from recalling her to actually pitching her. So I just flipped that over. But we did it in the same spot. We did it at the same distance. That's a retrieve. Right. That's, so that's I don't care if it's three feet or 30 feet. And now you're getting set up for extending it yeah. to Just larger pins, trailing. Then now you, can, now you can start working back into more retrieving stuff. As long as you, this is a lot like, don't go to that. Don't go to these retrieves outside if you don't have 110% confidence your dog is holding. And that comes from here to here walking around. If your dog spits it out at any point in there, get back here. Back step. Square one. Because you didn't do a good enough job. That's why I say don't rush. Because if you go, I think I'm pretty good with it, let's try the next thing. And it drops it at any point or spits it or leaves it or do does a victory lap at any point, you know where you're starting? Back on the table with the dowel. Day one. Figure six more weeks. Who wants to do that? So, like I said, I'd rather see you take an extra week on everything you do through this process than skip, think you got it, and go one week earlier and end up back on the table in a month or two. Because if you make the mistake, you go back to square one and start completely over. Because I don't know where the mistake exactly is, and you don't either. So you don't guess, oh, I think it's maybe when we first went down to the ground. What if it wasn't? And you're going to get a little bit further down the road and realize my dog drops. Back to where? Oh, maybe it was just before we went on the ground. Maybe it was with the bumpers on the table. So we try it there and we still have a problem. Uh, now we're going to go back to the very beginning. Wooden dowel, tied out, tethered out. Now the next time you do tying out with the wooden dowel, you'll probably go quicker. It might take you a week the first time, it might take you two days this time. To be 100% confident that it's not going to be an issue. Then move on. Wyatt's in the midst of it right now. So, just embarking on this journey. Mm -hmm. Who's got a question? Any questions? How long? 15, How long? 15 minutes a night? 20 minutes a night? The, there's no time on it. Just It's how long. If I can get three good repetitions out of a dog, that might be good for the night. If things go well and I think I can get six one night, I might do six. If I struggle to get one good one, I'll settle for two. I don't know. So... That session that I did with Millie was real time. I wouldn't have gone any further. Hutch, I maybe would have done one or two more. So I don't know, I probably have five minutes into them. And it doesn't take a lot. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. Once a day is good, if you can do twice a if day. If you can do twice a day, it'll speed your process up times two. So once they get to the point where they're not on the tailgate or on the table anymore, you could do this in your kitchen. Yeah, you could do it multiple times a day. I think you're faster if you do it twice a day, yeah. because rep what it, outline, I think it's number three on the outline, repetition and consistency forms habits. That's all dog training is. So if you do this repetitiously and consistently, it will become a habit. But that's what it's gonna take. Yeah, because you started in your basement on the table. Yeah, and, if you yeah, and, I, and the reason I did that was because it was so cold. Right, rather than, so, 
And then you were up in your kitchen. Yep. And, yep. Mm -hmm. and I went up in the kitchen four days earlier with one dog than the other. Like, these dogs were the twin sisters. And then you had one with Kimber on that bench right there. I did one with old Dan. I did one with Jet. But Kimber was on that bench for one or Ellie. One of them was sitting on that little bench in your kitchen, I remember. That so be. you might have put her back up. Could be. She might have dropped one. Yeah. You put her back up or something like that. I don't remember that one. I know I used that freezer for old Dan and Jet. So that's all that archive stuff, old Facebook stuff. My beard is a little longer. My spirit a little wilder. Uh, but w that's the thing that's nice about that's the thing that's nice about doing this. Like, are you live right now? Yeah. She's live right now. This will be forever. <laughs> it's funny because right before you asked that, April said the question for when someone asks, "How long will it take?" <laughs> is simple. It'll take as long as it needs to for each individual dog. So. Yeah. So, the the good job, April. the questions. <laughs> those are the same questions everybody has. And I think a lot of times the time question comes up so often with everything we do. And my answer never changes with that. I don't know. And I won't tell you it'll take three months. I know a lot of people do say, that's why I think people ask the question, because they hear different people say it takes different amounts of time. How do you know? I don't know how long it's going to take. I, I don't know. So... Instead of measuring it by time, I'll measure it by progress. When we're ready to move forward, we'll move forward. And when we're ready to move back, we'll move back. And lo and behold, we get there. But from a, this one right here really doesn't care if it's 11.15 right now. And you guys got to leave at noon. She doesn't care. Because the clocks don't matter to the dogs. And the number of days they do stuff doesn't matter to them. So we have to work on their timeline. They don't necessarily have to work on ours. That's the beauty of you guys training your own dogs. You're not paying someone by the month to do this. You're doing it. You'll get out of it what you put into it. So that's why we do this workshop. Good question. Anybody else? Good. So that's hold. Now, we got 45 minutes. Should we piece together a session of, so I'll leave it up to you guys, unless there's other stuff.